Now, why I am talking about this subject, what started it all, is I saw this very unique video and then eventually a set of videos from a YouTube channel called North Star Tools LLC. And it was a little bit of a mystery to me because I wondered who these people were and what this new multi-tool was about. I've never seen this multi-tool before. I've got, my son just counted, I've got somewhere between two to 300 multi-tools or maybe up to 350. And it is very rare that I see a multi-tool that I know nothing about. And this one right here really caught my attention because it's a naval multi-tool and it's huge. It's not very small, it's very, very large. This is a shipboard multi-tool spanner wrench uh, is one of the components. Then I think another component is a remote operated valve wrench, a flush mounted scuttle wrench, engineer's wrench, dogging wrench, and then something about a deck drain. And their video talks about a, or describes, walks you through a ship on fire, someone using a multi-tool to save people, I guess, fix things. It seems to be essentially an emergency tool that you can have with you and save lives, save property if you have it with you. Now, Right away, with it being described as North Star Tools LLC, I was pretty confident that this might be a Chinese tool. I mean, it makes sense, North Star. I feel like there's a lot of companies called that that are based out of China. But then I began researching a little bit about it, and I found out that it's actually a veteran-owned company, and it's actually based here in the United States. And it has, uh, they have a federal capability statement. It talks about they have a commitment to maritime safety. Uh, they specialize in the design and manufacture of innovative multifunctional tools tailored for shipboard emergency scenarios. And their flagship product is the shipboard multi tool. It exemplifies our dedication to quality and function. And it talks about maritime emergency situations. Well, that's that's really different. I wasn't quite sure what to think about it. And this does seem to be a veteran-owned company that may have gotten government approval to be a government vendor. Now, I don't know if they've been successful yet, but it there is a possibility that the United States Navy, at least, could at some point, if they're successful, begin issuing these multi-tools to perhaps some people below deck, or I'm not sure what circumstances exactly, but to certain personnel. Uh, that's, that's interesting. I know that the Gerber MP series, the Gerber Cable Dog, has seen some use of the military, some other models as well. Uh, now, a lot of people use, you know, they'll buy a Leatherman Mutt and take them into combat situations if they're allowed. But this perhaps could be a tool issued to the naval forces. Now, let's jump to some older tools for a little bit of historical context. Not too long after Leatherman started, as the online story goes, the Marines, the U.S. Marines, were looking for a multi-tool. And Gerber and Leatherman both entered the running for the first multi-tool, or one of the first multi-tools, for the Marines that was plier-based. Now, Leatherman put out their personal survival tool. Gerber came out with what they called their MPT, or their military provisional tool. This looks very similar to the PST, but it does have some differences. Now, I have a video talking about this. One of the first videos I ever made on the channel, or it's maybe one of the top 20, first 20 or so out of a thousand or so that I've made now, you can, you're welcome to go back and look at that. But let's fast forward today and what is happening with the military in multi-tools right now. Now, the next part of the puzzle comes with another website that I found called America Makes. I was simply scanning online for new multi-tools made in 2025, just so I had all the information that I stay up to date. And I ran across this competition. It's called the 2025 Additive in Steel Competition. Now, the teams, their due date was February 21st, final submission, April 11th. You can no longer join, 
but this is based out of Ohio and uh, Boardman Street in Youngstown, Ohio, actually. And I read, read down the list of requirements. It says teams will compete all phases of the project from design to final testing of the multi-tool. All required components of the project must be submitted. And it goes on with some more information. The multi-tool must be made using any steel or stainless steel suitable for additive manufacturing. Uh, can use any and or multiple metal additive manufacturing processes. Should be designed in such a way to complete all testing criteria as outlined. Heat treatment is allowed. Must be explained why it's chosen the technical report. You are allowed to use bolts for assembly. You're not required to. And the multi-tool shall not exceed three and a half inches by six and a half inches when fully collapsed. Now, I understand that a multi-tool can sometimes mean what I would call um, maybe more like a Dremel-like tool that cuts edging for the door. Not really Dremel, but you get the idea. But in this right here, I do think they're actually talking about a metal multi-tool. It's... Really interesting to think that people are, this is one of their projects. And why I said is the government funding this is because when I look at America Makes, it talks about advancing the technology, growing the workforce. And then it says, founded in 2012 as the Department of Defense's National Manufacturing Innovative Institute for AM and the first in the Manufacturing USA Network. Interesting. So, yeah, it says America Makes is based in Youngstown, Ohio, and managed by the not-for-profit National Center for Defense Manufacturing and Machining. That's very interesting. So could, by a strange coincidence, the Department of Defense be funding multi-tool research? And let me know what you guys think. Is this a good thing? Is it a bad thing? Is it possible? What do you think the teams will make? I doubt we will ever see what they have made, but that would sure be cool.